Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video I will show you how you can install a base system of Arch Linux, the foundation for all of your upcoming Linux experiments. This Arch Linux installation is the foundation for many upcoming videos that I'm planning to provide about desktop environments, several window managers and how to configure them and individualize them to your personal needs. I will use in this video the official Arch Linux installer script, which is included in the official Arch Linux ISO that you can download from the homepage. With this script, everyone should be able to install Arch Linux. It's very easy. And at the end of the video, I have a bonus chapter for you. I will show you how you can install the window manager Q tile on your new Arch Linux installation in the base configuration. And if you like that video, please subscribe to my channel. Let's jump in. The first step is the download of the Arch Linux ISO. Just enter Arch Linux downloads. And then you come here to that page and then you can download the ISO image from the location that fits best to you. In my case, Germany and we have to download this file, this ISO file. This is what we need. If the download is done, you can create a bootable USB stick on Linux with Balina Etcher or on Windows with Rufus. All links you can find in the description below. I will install Arch Linux in a virtual machine. That's why I don't need to create a bootable USB stick. I can use the ISO file directly. I create a new virtual machine. I start the installation with a local install media. I select the ISO file that I have just downloaded. Arch Linux is automatically detected from Virt Manager. I click on forward. I give that machine eight gigabytes on for the memory and 12 CPUs. I click on forward. I create a hard disk of 50 gigabytes, click on forward and I give that installation the name Arch Linux Base. I will customize the configuration before the installation starts. Click on finish. Okay, let's check. First of all, let's switch from BIOS to UEFI. Then let's change the topology for my CPUs. One, six, two. You click on apply. Memory is fine. I enable shared memory. Boot options. I have to activate the CD-ROM because the CD-ROM includes the ISO file where we want to install Arch Linux from. This is fine. This is the CD-ROM file. Display Spy is fine. The rest is okay. Then we can start with the installation. I choose the first entry, Arch Linux install medium and the system boots up and this is the welcome screen. Let's first change the keyboard layout with load keys, DE Latin 1 in my case. So all special characters are working now. Let's check the internet connection. Internet connection works fine. If you are using a Wi-Fi network, you have to follow the IWCTL utility. Um, you find the documentation in the Arch Linux wiki, the link in the description below. Okay, in my case, I can already start with Arch install. Some settings needs to be done before we can start the installation. The installation language is fine. English keyboard layout is, in my, is wrong in my case. I need the German keyboard layout. Um, mirror region, I select Germany with forward slash. You can search. Um, local language is fine. UTFS is fine. Let's check the drives. I take the disk with 50 gigabytes that I have just created, the disk layout, 
is I want to wipe out all selected drives and use the best effort default partition layout. I use ButterFS. I want to use the default structure of ButterFS and the, uh, the compression is also fine for me. This encryption not needed. The bootloader, I want to switch to crop. Swap is fine. The host name is Arch Linux. It's also okay. I will set a root password. And next step is to create a user account. I add a user. First step is to enter the username uh, and the password. Rabe is the super user and can use sudo commands. Yes. And I confirm and exit with that user configuration. The profile is xorg. xorg is the fundamental um, graphical system with the fundamental graphics drivers that we need later on for our window manager or desktop environments. I use all open source drivers. Audio, I will set to Pipewire. Additional packages. I will install Vim, I will install Git, and that should be fine for now. Network configuration, I will copy the existing configuration into the new installation. This is super easy to do, time zone is not UTC. Again, I search for Berlin. Time sync is fine, optional repositories not needed. I will start the installation now. And I confirm that setup with enter. And the installation starts. The Arch installation checks for the best connection to the mirror servers based on your location. This also can take a while. And if this is done, the installation and the, and if this is done, the download of the packages should start. Okay, and now the installation has started. First of all, downloading the packages. And the installation of the packages of the main packages has started. The services will be enabled now. This is the installation of Grub, our bootloader. And the installation of the additional packages has started now. And Vim and Git are the last packages that will be installed. And that's it. The installation is done. We do not need to change into the root directory um, for now. So we can proceed with selecting no. So we exit the installation and enter reboot. Okay, the grub bootloader comes up. That's perfect. And I choose Arch Linux. And let's try the first boot and we are already in and we can log in with our created user. Let's check the keyboard layout. So it seems that my some of my special characters are not working. So let's open the configuration file with sudo vim slash etc vconsole enter my password. Yes, and here you see that the key map is set to DE in my case. I want to have DE in Latin 1. I save the settings with escape WQ. Let's exit and log in again. And now the special characters are working. And that's the base installation. Let's install Qtile as a window manager. To do this, we need to install with sudo 
pacman s several packages. Alacrity is my preferred terminal emulator. Scrot is my screen capturing tool. Nitrogen is needed to set up a wallpaper. Pycom enables desktop effects. Slock is a simple, straightforward lock for your desktop. Then we install Rofi to create custom menus. We need to install Dunst. Dunst is the notification manager. Then let's install Tuna as from as my graphical file manager. Mousepad as a graphical simple editor. Let's install Polybar. This will later on replace the standard Qtile bar. The icon theme Breeze and Breeze GTK for GTK applications. And that's it. And of course, Qtile. Yes, I proceed with the installation. And the installation is done. The next step that we have to do is to create a file .xinitrc to start Qtile with the command startx. I'm not using a display manager. I'm using the startx command to start my desktop environment after the terminal based login. Okay, let's do this. Vim dot x in it rc and we only have to add one command and the command is exec qtile start and save the file and now we should already be able to start qtile with the command start x and we are in qtile this is the fun fundamental installation of Qtile and based on that we can now start with the configuration.